everyone. Uh, nice to see you again. So I'm Allison Pascone. I am an early learning librarian with the Pierce County Library System. And I am here today. Um, I've been making a bunch of different videos on how you can practice different early literacy skills using flannel board stories and songs and games. And so today I am actually going to be doing the method for how to make these really cool flannel board pieces I've been showing you in the different videos. Um, so I have here a couple of mittens um, because I'm actually going to be making a shape like this one, a mitten shape, um, similar to this, just a little bit bigger. So you can kind of see how it's done. Um, a mitten is a pretty basic shape, but I think when you're, when you're starting out with this method, you always want to try and do something pretty simple and pretty basic. Um, well, like this, of course, this is my, my snowball. This is my circle shape. Um, that's the easiest one you could probably make. But with a mitten, you're not doing a whole bunch of little details on the inside, which you can get into later the more you do and make flannel boards. Uh, you're just doing the basic outline and cutting around the outline of the mitten shape. And this actually, just because you're probably curious, so this is a, a flannel board where there's a snowball hiding behind different mittens. And so you would say, snowball, snowball, cold and round, behind which mitten can you be found? And then, of course, I put up a whole bunch of different colors I've got yellow and red, and, and the children have to guess which color or which sort of interesting pattern, but however they want to describe it, on the mitten, the snowball is hiding, and then we lift the mitten and find the snowball. But I, I want to do a different version of this rhyme for my program next week that I have, and so I'm going to be making different size mittens. So you can do the same rhyme with the snowball, snowball, but you could have a, a this is the small mitten, and then I'm going to make a really big mitten um, but I'm going to demonstrate the medium size mitten with you today. So it's actually something I'm going to be using next week. So before I get started with making everything, I want to be sure and give credit to uh, the lady who actually came up with this really cool method for making flannel boards. Her name is Anita Schenneberger. She worked for Pierce County Library System as a youth librarian for for several years, for a number of years actually, and then before that she worked for King County Library System as a youth services librarian there. Um, and she's a quilter, she's a storyteller, so she kind of combined her, her love of books and stories and, and quilting and came up with this method for making flannel boards, which once you practice it and do it, the more you do it, it's actually pretty easy and you can make them pretty quickly and then you have more and more flannel boards to use in your classroom with your children. So we're going to get started. I'm going to show you the materials that you need in order to start making flannel boards. There's a few basic things that's really good if you have on hand. Um, well, of course, behind me here, I'm going to move so you can see I have my iron and my ironing board because it's, going to, it's an iron-on method where we're going to be ironing one type of fabric, a thinner fabric like a cotton fabric, onto the thicker fabric, which is our felt or our flannel, right? This will be the back side of all of our pieces. It's going to stick to the flannel board, just like this. See if I see here's the front of my mitten. It's really pretty with the fat, bright fabric. But on the back is felt, this exact same felt. And it helps it to stick uh, to the flannel board. So when you put your pieces up, they stay up. So felt or flannel is one of the things that you need. And the bigger amount, the better, because even though the pieces are pretty small, if you have fun with it and you want to make a lot, um, it goes pretty quickly and then you have to go to the store and get more. So getting a big amount is good. And then, of course, you also need your thinner fabric, sort of cotton material fabric. Um, today I'm going to be making an orange mitten. So hopefully, hopefully it looks orange on the camera. <laughs> Hard to tell. Um, but so this is uh, the fabric that's going to go on the front to make it look really pretty and bright and colorful, right? So you need two kinds of fabric, felt and this thin cotton material, which irons on really nicely. You also need this stuff. I'm going to show it in the roll. It comes in kind of a large roll like this, or sometimes if you get it at like a, like a fabric store, it might come in a big sheet. But typically it's in kind of a big rolled up paper kind of thing. Um, and this is called, this specific brand is called Heat and Bond, but it's a fusible adhesive so it sticks the fabric together so it's double it's sticky on both sides 
and I'm gonna actually show the smaller piece that I'm gonna be using today so hopefully you can see. So on one side is like a paper for tracing. It's flat and smooth. Okay, then if you turn it on the other side, it's probably hard to tell from here, but it's bumpy. That's the sticky side. They're actually both sticky, but the paper is covering one of the sticky sides for now to make it easier to trace. Okay, so this is stuff that you can get in any major craft or fabric store in your area. There's probably some big stores close to you, um, and they usually sell it. If you don't know, I always have trouble finding this, so I just ask, where's the... Um, it, you could call it, um, it could be called Fusible Web or call it Heat and, Heat and Bond is one of the major brands of it. So, and they can point you to where it is. So, so there's that. That's going to stick our fabrics together. And then you also need something for tracing because you're going to trace out your pattern. I like to use Sharpies because they're just pretty precise and they also are really bold so you can see your lines that you made. But if you don't have a Sharpie on hand, you could use any kind of a marker, like a washable Crayola type marker. You could even use a pen. Um, the lines won't be as wide, but you can still see what you traced. Shouldn't be too hard. So, so that's that for tracing. And then also you need some scissors. And so I actually have, usually I get both my scissors, my big pair and my tiny little detail scissors. It depends on what I'm making. If I'm just gonna do a basic shape today like a mitten, I'll probably just use the big scissors as long as they're sharp. It's good to know that they're sharp and they cut through fabric. <laughs> um, but these are great for when you're doing more detailed work on the flannel board, like if you make an animal and you wanna trace and cut, or, cut out you know, the details in their face, like their ears and eyes and all the details there. These get into those little spaces and they make it really easy to do that versus this, which is more cuts on the outline, the outside part of your shape. Uh, so, but the good, the good thing actually with these scissors is the fabric doesn't dull scissors the way that paper and other things do. It's easier on your scissors. You just wanna make sure that the scissors are sharp to start out with because it is a little trickier to cut through fabric. So, and I wanna show my pattern I have today. <laughs> So here's my original pattern I used for my small mittens that I showed you. Um, and I actually just took a mitten and put it on a paper and traced around to make a slightly <laughs> bigger pattern. And hopefully it'll turn out okay. I'm not the world's best artist, so we'll see. But here's my pattern I'm going to be using today. Um, patterns are pretty easy to find on the internet. If you go to any major search engine, if you go to Google, or Bing or some of those places and just in their main search box type in what it is you're looking for so like if you want to make a frog <laughs> for example you type in frog and I like to say uh, coloring pages because that'll give me something that's a little bit bigger and more of an outline that I can work with versus just a picture of something which might be harder to print out and trace over so if you do coloring pages and then whatever it is you're looking for frog cat a truck, <laughs> whatever you but you should be able to find stuff. Click on when you, after you type that in, then make sure you click the image underneath the search box. So you're doing an image search, not just a general search of everything on, on the web. That'll get you to pictures specifically. All right, so I think we're ready to start making our mitten today. Um, oh, one more thing though, I wanted to share with you. I shared about my fabric. And here's some fabric that I'm going to, the one I'm going to be using today. I got this at the fabric store. It came in, um, it's just sort of a square by square, uh, it actually says on here, I'll show you, 18 inches by 21 inches. And they look like this. They're called fabric quarters. And so if you, any major craft store that also has fabric or any fabric store too. You can go and usually they put them along the wall, sort of on the outside of where the where the main bolts of fabric are. You'll see these displayed along the outside on, along the wall. And um, if you just want, because you're just going to be doing a little bit with your flannel board pieces, so you don't want something really giant, <laughs> you don't need something really giant, these work great and you can get a huge variety of colors and patterns and fun fun pictures on there. I just show a few that I found. Obviously, I was looking for blue or green um, fabric quarters. And then, but you can get real basic, plain like this gray, which is just plain gray. Or you can get really fun 
pictures. I want to show you just a few. This one is meant, it looks kind of like water droplets. Uh, you can also get, I love this one. I've been making things using this fabric recently. It has watermelons on them. If you're making a, a sort of a more plain shape, like a door or a mitten or things like that, it's kind of fun to jazz it up a little bit with fabric like this. My last one I want to show is this kitty. A kitten with yarn. <laughs> I thought this was really cute. So I made a kitten mitten. And you can talk about rhyming words too. All right, so, but today we're gonna get started and I already did the first step, which was to draw or trace my pattern. So I have my pattern. That's the first step that you wanna do. Either print off your pattern using that search we just talked about on Google or Bing or another search engine where you do the like coloring pages and then frog, coloring pages, cat, coloring pages, truck. <laughs> get your pattern and print it off. Sometimes you can make it a little bigger or smaller to and adjust it how you want it. Okay, then you're gonna take your pattern and you're gonna take your adhesive. So now I wanna put it, the bumpy side, which is rough here, the bumpy side, I wanna put it down on my pattern. So I'm gonna put it down like this so that the, the paper is facing up. And actually, I'm gonna move my camera so you can see me. Not that you really need to see me trace, but. <laughs> So you can see what it looks like. There you go. All right, so then I'm gonna trace so that I get my mitten pattern onto my adhesive here. We'll trace around here. That's why I love these Sharpies because they just make it so easy and you can see it so well. And what I forgot to do um, before, we'll try this. We'll, I'm gonna draw a line across and I'll show you what I do with that later make it look kind of like these other mittens here that have a separation there, if you can see that. Okay, I'm gonna move this back up. So now we're done with this step. <laughs> All right, so put my pen away. Now I've got my mitten, sorry about that. I've got my mitten traced onto my adhesive here. Okay, now what I wanna do, I've got a lot of extra and the most expensive part of making flannel board is this adhesive. It can be a little bit expensive, so I like to save it because sometimes you can just use a little tiny bit. Um, if you're doing something really detailed or small, I try to save as much as I can. So I'm going to cut just loosely around my mitten so that I'm not using all this extra when I iron. I'm going to put it down there. Okay. All right. I've got my mitten. <laughs> it's sort of wanting to curl, but there it is. So now I'm going to go to my ironing board and I'm gonna do the first iron. And what I wanna do is start with the thing that's gonna be in front. So the pretty colorful fabric that you see in the front like this. So you always start with the colorful fabric. The flannel is always gonna be the thing you iron on last. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my orange today. And what I like to do first is I like to make sure that I iron this fabric so it doesn't have any wrinkles in it before I iron it onto my adhesive. Now I'm gonna explain one more thing before I go over to my ironing board because I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to hear me <laughs> when I go to my ironing board. So once I've ironed this and it's nice and nice and even, I am gonna iron it on to my adhesive. I'm gonna iron them together. And um, it's somebody else who loved to, who's taught a lot of flannel board classes has this really fun saying she says where she says, rough to wrong rough to wrong that helps you to remember how you want to iron your adhesive to your fabric so you want to take the rough side not the clear lines that you traced but the other side the bumpy part okay rough <laughs> and you want to take the wrong side of the fabric here's the brighter side don't want to iron it to that side yet i want to iron it to the wrong side here rough to wrong all right so i'm going to go and do that first step of ironing over here. I'm going to move my camera so hopefully you can see me over here as I iron. Okay. It's a little bit it's a little bit blurry. I apologize about that. But I will show you the finished product once I get this ironed on here. Ooh, I wonder if we can adjust that. Okay. So I'm just ironing. Oh, there we go. Hello. I was a little bit blurry there. I apologize. So I'm ironing my fabric first, 
okay? Now that should be pretty even. Sometimes you can add a little bit of water to help get some of the wrinkles out. Irons are great that way. You can spray it so that your iron, it makes it really get, get some of those lines out because nobody wants to have lines on their flannel board pieces. Okay, now I'm gonna take my adhesive that I traced and here's my wrong side. I'm gonna put it down, my bumpy side, I'm gonna put it down on my wrong side of my fabric and I'm gonna iron. You just move it around a few times with your iron. Keep it moving. If you leave it on for too long, it could burn it. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to come back so you can see. So here it is, stuck to the wrong side of the fabric. And yeah, with when you're ironing, you want to make sure, don't just stick it on there and leave it for a long time. You want to keep it moving because the iron... I usually turn it to the setting that says cotton or linen, which is the highest setting. Because this fabric is cotton, it'll help it to stick really quickly. Um, feel free if you want to start off with a lower setting, though. You don't have to start off with the highest setting, necessarily. If it doesn't stick, you can always turn the iron up. Everybody's iron's a little bit different, so if you know that your iron is a little bit too hot at the high setting, then try with a lower setting first. Okay. So now, I am going to cut out my mitten I'm going to cut all around on the purple line so we get rid of the extra fabric. That's the next step. Okay. And hopefully I did a good job of drawing the original mitten so it comes out looking like a mitten. We'll see. All right. And there it is. There it is on the other side. Pretty good, I think. Everybody can tell what shape it is. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so now I'm gonna do one more thing with this step. If you want, you can just leave it like this. Just cut, have it be a mitten like this, and then we'll, we would go on to the last, one of the final steps. If you wanna be a little bit more detailed in your work for your mitten, see my purple line that I drew there? I'm gonna just cut off that part. I'm going to cut across my purple line. Okay. All right. So now I have two pieces. I've got the, the shorter mitten and then this piece that was on the bottom. This is where we bring our felt in. Okay. So this is the last step. So the paper that's on the back, we're going to peel off the paper so that we reveal the sticky side of and it's actually, it looks kind of shiny. I don't know if that comes through on the camera, but you can see, so this is gonna, this is the part that's gonna stick the fabric to the felt for the back part of it. I'm gonna peel off this paper too because we're gonna put them together on the felt. So I'm gonna clear off a little bit here. So hopefully if I move my camera down, you can see how I arrange it on my fabric. So I'm gonna spread my fabric out <laughs> it's kind of a big piece here. And then I am going to put down, okay, move my camera so you can see. Let's put it on the end so we can try and, I like to save as much of the fabric as I can. I'm going to put it, oh, move the camera so you can see. Hopefully we'll put this down there. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put it here. So there's the top part, and then I'm gonna take my last piece and leave some, leave a gap or leave a space just to give it kind of a cool detailed look. And I'm gonna arrange it like that. Now you see? Then you'll have this sort of little background which makes it look a little bit more, I don't know, kind of finished or, or cool looking, gives it a cool effect. Okay, so now I'm gonna move my camera. Let's see if we can give it some time to focus. And I'm gonna take, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna take my mitten and my felt over to my ironing board. I might have to, I might have to rearrange it a little bit again once it gets here. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Get the fabric set. Put my mitten the way I want it. And then we're gonna iron the mitten onto the felt. 
And again, you just want to move the iron around. Don't let it sit for too long on the fabric. Keep it moving. It'll stick very quickly. It doesn't take too long at all. Okay. Iron down. I'm going to come back. <laughs> and now, let's see if I can hold it up so you can see. There it is on the felt. Ta-da! <laughs> There's our mitten. So now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut around the mitten just to kind of, because there's so much fabric on here, it's, it's easier if you're cutting a smaller piece of fabric than a bigger piece. So I'm just going to cut around here first and then I can cut how I want more specific in a minute. Okay. Put the fabric down. All right. So I'm just going to cut around. This is the last step. You, I want to leave a little bit of an outline of felt around the outside of the mitten so that you can see. It just gives it a cooler look, kind of makes, makes it look more like a 3D or detailed work. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. <laughs> Almost done. Okay. So again, you can leave a big amount. You can do a little bit, but it's always good to have some. So here is my mitten. This is my middle size mitten. Here's my smaller one I was showing earlier. So I think they look pretty good. I'm going to make a bigger one later too so that I can do my snowball game and children can guess what size mitten the snowball is hiding under. Um, so that's kind of a fun math flannel board activity you can do with with mittens, and mittens are a nice basic shape. One thing I wanted to share about the felt that I didn't share before. So, of course, felt, you can get felt at any fabric store and a lot of major craft stores that carry fabric, but one place that I look in the store for the felt is if you go to sort of near the, the counter where you can, people help you cut, cut the fabric to the size that you want. Um, oftentimes they have a for sale area where they have um, leftover fabric scraps that people didn't want and they're selling it for not very much and you can often find good amounts of felt there in fact that's where I got this felt that I used today it was in that one of those areas um, which is really nice because not that felt is that expensive but it's always if it's already been pre-cut and everything it's more convenient just to grab that and, and use that um, you want to try usually I like to use a darker color felt for the background because it makes the bright colors show up a little bit more. So navy blue or black work really well, or a dark gray, dark brown will work well too. Um, but of course it is kind of fun sometimes to use white as the background too, but typically I use a navy blue or black for my background felt. Um, and I know there was one more thing I wanted to share with you. Oh, I wanted to say, so when you're starting out, uh, for the first time doing the method, making basic shapes like a mitten, circle or square or things like that, is a great place to practice. And then you can get more and more detailed and specific making people and animals and things like that after later on. But you can do so many different flannel boards using, you know, if you use a circle shape, you can do a rhyme about circles or you can do a rhyme about bubbles or anything that you can think of that is the shape of a circle, balls. Um, lots of different things. You can do counting with them. You can do different size circles and talk about, you know, which one is the biggest one or different colors. So you're teaching the color uh, concept of colors. Um, another fun shape to work with would be hearts, especially with the holiday we have coming up pretty soon. Or even stars and sing, you know, make a few star shapes. Find a pattern online that works and do a few stars in different colors and then do the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with your children where they get to Bring this, a different star up to the flannel board as you sing the song. Um, there's so many ways that you can use these beautiful fabric pieces on the flannel board without doing a whole bunch of pieces that in, involve a lot of detail at first. It's good to practice with sh basic shapes first. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, again, it's something that you can, you can pause me. <laughs> pause me after each step if you want more time to do that step and then play it and, and keep going that way so that you can um, take your time with that um, and try each different step 
I'm also going to find a way to post uh, or somehow send out, we'll see, <laughs> the different steps to this method. Um, because there are, it's a lot to remember when you're first starting out. So we will try and get that to you as well. So thank you so much for watching and we'll be back with another video with more resources and information soon.